Hi there, Sugar Snaps. Welcome to the second part in my jumbo flyer experiment project. This video will be going over dyeing the fiber for my art yarn. So this is the second part in a three part video series. So be sure to check out this video up here, which is the first part and keep an eye out for the third part, which will be coming out in a few days. I'll have all parts linked in the description below. So today's project will be covering exploring through my fiber stash and choosing a fiber that I will be dyeing to create the art yarn in part three of this series. So let's go explore my fiber stash now. Okay, here is some of my fiber stash. This is Merino Superwash, that's for a project already. Camel, baby camel top. Uh, French Angora, that would be fun. I kind of want to dye something. Egyptian cotton, don't want to use that for this. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is use this roving and I'm going to dye it. So I was going to try to do this very systematically and create some sort of nice written out concept and design. And I'm not really in that headspace right now. <laughs> I want to dye this fiber and see what happens. So we're gonna do that and just kind of pursue that form of creativity. But I will go over my steps. Number one, I need to dye this fiber and see what the outcome is. Number two, I will process that fiber, however that looks, and prepare to spin it. Number three, spin that yarn or fiber into yarn on the jumbo flyer. Uh, was that three? Four. That will be taking the yarn from the spinning wheel off of the bobbin and putting it onto my nitty knotty or rolling it into a ball or something like that. And number house four. Number five will be coming up with a project or just deciding that I want it to percolate for a while longer and store the yarn, never to be seen again. <laughs> no, I really do want to use this fiber or yarn for something once it comes into existence. Though uh, I feel like this is this might be a spinner thing, but sometimes the joy of creating is in the spinning process. And then once the yarn is spun, the creative process is satisfied and storing that hand spun yarn in a bin somewhere is just as fulfilling as pursuing <laughs> a finished product. I like making the things to make the things, not always make the thing out of the thing I made. I'm glad I have my notebook and pencil out because I really have a lot of thoughts. In the pursuit of a new dyeing technique to experiment with and learn, I came across a new book that I want to, or new to me, <laughs> a book that I want to share with you and I will do that now. I did get this book from the library, Spinning and Dyeing Yarn, um, Ashley Martineau and it has a little section on acid dyeing and I checked my stash and I have some acid dyes from Jacquard and I think I'm going to pursue that because I was looking on Paradise Fiber's website and they have some beautiful immersion dyed wool that I was like oh my gosh this would make such a cool art yarn and they were sold out of, sold out of <laughs> two seconds they were sold out of all of it Ah, so I take that to mean that I need to do my own immersion dyeing and I have the acid dye so I'm gonna move forward with that. I'm gonna go grab those so that we can talk about colors. Okay, I'm back. I feel like I start to film and then realize that I forgot something and have to run and get it quite just. Okay, so I have my pot here and I have the Jacquard dyes. I have Vermilion, Teal, Burgundy, Royal Blue, Sapphire Blue, and Turquoise. So I probably won't use all of these on the same thing. And in fact, I might just play it safe and go with the blues, the Turquoise, Royal Blue, and Teal. And Sapphire Blue, that's four. But I'm really which is weird for me, drawn towards burgundies and crimsons, maybe because of autumn and all of the kind of fiery colors going on on the deciduous trees right now. 
I'm really drawn to those. So, oh gosh, I think I'll make the final decision once I get stuff in the pot. But according to these instructions, story time with Brittany. Ah, uh, where did it go? Ooh, man. Okay, this book has so many cool projects in it. They have instructions on how to build your own spinning wheel. Isn't that awesome? You can build your own spinning wheel and have a custom spinning wheel. I mean, that is pretty cool. And then tons of different art yarn techniques, boucle, cocoons, shells, bubbles. If you haven't seen this book and you're a spinner, I highly suggest it. I'm about halfway through reading through it like a novel and I am just really enjoying it because there's so much information. Several different DIY ways to create things like this um, hackle she makes out of a wood board and plastic combs. So just cool things like that that are DIYable so that you don't have to spend a ton of money on spinning tools right away. You can experiment with some DIY things before. Uh, anyways, beautiful pictures. This is what I'm going to use. And oh yeah, that's right. I was talking about immersion dyeing. Okay, what is that section? Um, in section two, yes, dyeing fiber. Under immersion dyeing, it says that I need to fill up my pot. I have my pot right here. Fill up my pot with water and then put some vinegar in it, a cup of vinegar. It's not specific specific about the amount of water to the amount of vinegar and all that, but it just says fill your pot up, half full of water, add a cup of vinegar, and then add in the fiber, and then, and then you raise the temperature, and then you put the dye on, and then you let it sit for like 20 minutes or until the water runs clear. So that seems pretty straightforward. I think I can do that, so yeah. We're gonna do a little immersion dyeing. So come uh, hang out in my kitchen and let's do some immersion dyeing with our little pot and our acid dyes. I have a tendency to fall into kind of a rough Russian mobster accent, a little bit like Gru, if you know who I'm talking about. Come my minions. So for this project, what you're going to need is some fiber, a pot, your acid dyes. I'll see you in the kitchen. One cup of vinegar. Granny Brittany wants to remind you to use tools specifically for dyeing. Don't mix them with your kitchen tools. Now I am weighing out some fiber. This is a cheviot fiber and placing it in the pot, soaking it into the water with the vinegar, and then bringing up the temperature. I need it to steam, not boil, not simmer, steam. So I was waiting for the steam and it finally started to steam and I was ready to go. Okay, y'all. It is time to add the dyes. Whoa. It's time to add the dyes. I chose burgundy, royal blue, and teal, and my pot is finally steaming. It's not supposed to boil, so I'm trying to hold it off the boil, off the bubbling. Here goes. Burgundy. Let me lower this so you can see what I'm doing. I think I'm going to leave these white spots so that it kind of breaks up the color. Okay, I've turned this down to a four. I'm gonna watch it to make sure that it stays steamy and hot. And then, oh yeah, I gotta set a timer. See you in 20 minutes. After the suggested 20 minutes, I took the fiber off the stove and it had not absorbed all the dye yet. So I allowed it to sit overnight and called it a night that day. The next morning, I pulled it out and rinsed it. It only had a little bit of dye left in it, so there wasn't a lot of rinsing to be done. But I rinsed it out and discovered it was super dark. And then I used a salad spinner to spin out the excess water to get it as dry as possible. I recently read that wool can hold up to 30% of its weight in water without feeling damp. So I was working really hard to try to get out as much, much moisture as possible so that it would dry as quickly as possible. Here I'm rolling it out with a rolling pin on a towel to soak it out. And I got some nice variegation of color though they're super dark because I used such a concentration of the dye powder. And then I set the fiber on a chair over a heater vent to dry. 
Well, I was intending to do another batch of wool and I was going to use burgundy, teal, and vermilion. And I accidentally missed some blue dye when I was cleaning up the pot. And so there is blue in my pot already. So I think I'm just gonna add dye to what's already in there. And I'll just have blue in there as well. Hello, welcome to day, I think it's three, but it could be four, I've kind of lost count and who cares. I have my dye bolt and I'm super excited to show you. The first one turned out really dark and so I did a second batch just to experiment and I think I like it better just because there's more definition between the colors, the way that the colors dyed. I didn't add as much dye, which I think is a big, part of why the first ended up so dark compared to the second one. Uh, I didn't know how much dye to add or how little dye to include, so I kind of just dumped it in there and put too much because it ended up almost black in some places. So I'll pull it out here and show you. So here is my first batch. You can see some of the teal turquoise came out and some of the purple, but the purple almost looks black because it was so intense. So I have some nice dark teals. And then my second batch ended up this really cool kind of unicorn-y light colors. The purpose of dyeing this fiber was one, to experiment with a new dyeing process, and two, because I wanted to have some cool dyed yarn to do some jumbo flyer spinning. And in the same book that I got this idea for the immersion dyeing, she has a ton of different ways of spinning art yarn. And so what I'm going to do is use the dark fiber to spin a core yarn, which will be a yarn that's a single, spun pretty evenly. I'm going to do that on my Ashford Kiwi because I have more bobbins for it. And then I'm going to use this more variegated, lighter color to create a, a core spun yarn. So this will then get spun over the single that I spin from this darker stuff and create kind of a fun art yarn. Okay, so I'm going to stop this video here and put the rest of it in the third part, which will be all about spinning art yarn from this dyed fiber and be sure to check back in a few days for that video. If you haven't seen the first part of this video, again, it's linked up in the top and in the description below. Check that out to see how I set up the jumbo flyer and got all prepared so that it makes sense when you get to the third video. I hope you're inspired to try your own immersion dyeing. It was really fun. I'm pretty stoked to try some different colors. Check the description below for lots of links and resources and all the supplies that I used throughout this video. As always, I really appreciate you being here. Thanks for supporting my channel and my work. Like this video and subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified when I put out a new video. There's links in the description below to my email update list. You can sign up for that and I'll send you lots of resources for all the different fiber arts that I cover on this channel and on my website. News from here and my website and any inspiration or tutorials that I come across that I think might be valuable to you. See you in a few days for part three and until then happy making see you next time bye today I have a oh I'm in a mood pot no that's mess. acid dice no nope. <laughs> this is a pot and acid dice